Good evening. Welcome to worship. Good to see all of you and a warm welcome to our guests and visitors. If you'd like to know more about our congregation and the Word of God that we teach, please be sure to get a hold of me. All the information is found on the back side of the worship folder. Today's theme, and it comes under the overall theme for Lent, crushed, is our condemnation is crushed by God's grace. As you hear the Word of God, please be sure to take it home with you, take it into your everyday life, share it with other people, and apply it. Let's sing the opening hymn, which is hymn number 916, but a familiar hymn, 916 in the new blue hymnal. We sing together, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. Please stand. The order of worship which we follow is found beginning in the Blue New Hymnal on page 154. It is this service, along with most of the hymns used today, uh, that is familiar. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. 
I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Responding then to the message and announcement of forgiveness, we sing, In the Place of Glory Be to God, hymn number 657 in the blue hymnal, Baptismal Waters Cover Me. Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. To your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, 
now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Our first lesson is taken from Isaiah chapter 12, beginning with verse 1. It is God's grace that turns the gloom of our condemnation into the joy of salvation. This is brought out in this reading. In that day you will say, I will give thanks to you, Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you comfort me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust him and will not be afraid, because Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord, proclaim his name, declare among the peoples what he has done, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done amazing things. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, daughter of Zion, for the Holy One of Israel is great among you. This is the word of the Lord. We sing now the psalm of the day, which is found in the red hymnal in the front on page 34. We th sing together. Psalm 32. Our second reading is taken from Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 1. In Christ Jesus, God has already condemned all sin. For us, there is God's grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. So then, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
For in Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. Indeed, what the law was unable to do because it was weakened by the flesh, God did when he sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh to deal with sin. God condemned sin in his flesh so that the righteous decree of the law would be fully satisfied in us who are not walking according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. To be sure, those who are in harmony with the sinful flesh think about things the way the sinful flesh does. And those in harmony with the Spirit think about things the way the Spirit does. Now the way the sinful flesh thinks results in death. But the way the Spirit thinks results in life and peace. For the mindset of the sinful flesh is hostile to God, since it does not submit to God's law, and in fact it cannot. Those who are in the sinful flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the sinful flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed God's Spirit lives in you. And if someone does not have the Spirit of Christ, that person does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, but your spirit is alive because of righteousness. The word of the Lord. Please stand. What comes at this point is the gospel acclamation. There is an introduction and then we sing together as we sing the refrain and then I'll speak the verse and that's where the gospel acclamation comes in. The verse through which We proclaim Jesus as our Lord and God, also the refrain, and then we'll close with the refrain. The Gospel Acclamation. the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Which is also the sermon text is written in the Gospel of St. Luke, the 15th chapter, beginning with verse 11. Jesus said, A certain man had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all that he had and traveled to a distant country. There he wasted his wealth with reckless living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. He went out and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. He would have liked to fill his stomach with the carob pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, and I am dying from hunger? I will get up, go to my father, and tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He got up and went to his father. While he was still far away, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran, hugged his son, and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate, because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Then they began to celebrate. His older son was in the field. As he approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what was going on. The servant told him, Your brother is here. Your father killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. 
The older brother was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. He answered his father, Look, these many years I've been serving you, and I never disobeyed your command, but you never gave me even a young goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours arrived, after wasting your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. The father said to him, You are always with me, son, and all that I have is yours. But it was fitting to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We ask you to take one of those white attendance guest cards, fill it out, and then place it in a basket as it goes around after the sermon. As you return these cards, that helps us to serve you better, to get to know you and our guests better, and also serve others. Thank you for, for doing that. We continue with the next hymn, which is a beautiful, familiar hymn. We're going to split it up as we have the children's lesson in between. Children are asked to come forward at the beginning of verse 2. Let's sing verses 1 and 2 of hymn number 576 in the new blue hymnal, Amazing Grace. <laughs> Good evening. So good to see you today, ready and willing to listen to the Word of God. Today, when I preach from the pulpit, I'm going to share a parable which we just heard from the lectern in our gospel reading. And a parable was used by Jesus many times as he taught people. Of course, he's the perfect teacher and preacher as he's God. We can learn a lot from him. And as he taught, he used parables. A parable is a story that Jesus told to the people. And then after he told them the story, he had a very, very important point to make. And he made it through the whole story. Now, I want to share with you another one of Jesus' stories. In fact, it comes just before the one we just heard. It's the story about a hundred sheep and the shepherd. So, I have here a what? Yep, sheep, little lamb, right? How cuddly it is, how nice it is. All right? Now, this shepherd had a hundred sheep, but one got lost. Where did that, wait, where did that sheep go that I just had? Where did it go? Where did it go? Can you show me where it is? Tell me where it is. You found it. You found it. 
That's right. So the shepherd left 99 sheep that were okay in the pen, and he left. And he went to find that one. You know what? He found that one. He put that one up on his shoulders, the Bible says, and he took it back home. He knew all of his sheep. One, two, three, four, wait a minute, 99, one is gone. He went looking and he found that one. Took it home and you know what he did then? He celebrated. Oh boy, he was so happy that he had found that one sheep. Now, Jesus teaches us that we are like that one sheep. We were lost on our way to hell because of our sins. Yep, we were lost. But then Jesus found us. And he brought us into his family. He's the good shepherd, the Bible says. He watches over us every day. Such a shepherd is he that he went to the cross and died for all of our sins so that we would be found. Isn't that wonderful? That's a great message. And we are found and not lost. We are alive and not dead. That's what you're going to hear as I preach the sermon. So you be sure to listen very carefully and see how this story that Jesus taught about the sheep that got lost is just like the one that I'm going to teach as I preach. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we were lost, lost in our sin, deserving of only hell, but you found us. By the gospel, you brought us into your family. You are the good shepherd who went to the cross and died for us. We are found. Help us, Lord, to think about that every day and rejoice in it. In your name, dear Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, you can go back and sing the next hymn, the last two verses of the hymn we were singing. the Father's amazing grace lead you to be joyful over the fact that you are found and not lost, dear friends. I want you to think about something that you lost. Have you ever lost something that is extremely valuable and how you looked for it everywhere? You looked and you looked and you looked and maybe you found it. And what was that like when you found it? You were joyful and happy. It's a good feeling when you find something that you lost. When you lose your phone, for example, you go looking for it. Today, for all phones pretty much, they make an app. Find your phone. And somebody spent a lot of time a lot of money making that particular app so that you could find your phone. When a child is lost or maybe taken, the Amber Alert goes out and everybody starts looking for the child. So excited about trying to find that child. We have to find that child. And then they find the child and, oh, there's rejoicing. 
and everybody is happy. Every organization pretty much has a lost and found box. We have one in our main entrance, and people that lose something here, they can take a look in the box and see if it's there, and hopefully they'll find what they lost, and, and then they're happy and they're joyful. Well, our Lord God so much more infinitely cares for people, for souls. And so as we study this particular parable, we're going to take a good look at and we're going to appreciate the Father's amazing grace, amazing love that we don't deserve at all. There are three parables, one right after another, and they're pretty much teaching the same point. We heard about the one, the lost sheep. Another one, the lost coin. The woman lost a coin. And she looked and she looked everywhere for that coin, and she found the coin. And you know what she did? She said, come on, friends, let's celebrate. I am so happy that I found the coin. And, and then we have this one where it talks about lost sons. Yes, not just one son lost, but really both sons were lost in their own way. And why did Jesus teach these parables and the meaning? It's because it follows how the Pharisees and the scribes were criticizing Jesus for eating with and being with what they felt to be the scum of the earth. How can he eat with them? It says that they said, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. How could he do that? They're a lost cause. They're not worth it. What in the world is he mingling with them for? And then Jesus told them these parables. After these parables, he reminds them that there is celebrating in heaven with the angels over one, one sinner who repents. That's the price, isn't it, of a soul? Priceless. And God wants that soul to be found and not lost, to be alive and not dead. And Jesus is making the point as he now teaches the parable. And the parable is about a son, the younger son, who wants his inheritance. Can you imagine that? A child coming up to you and saying, I want my inheritance right now. That's what he said. He said, Dad, give me my inheritance right now. I don't want to wait until you die. It's kind of like saying, I wish that you would die so that I would have my inheritance. And it says the father gave him his share of the inheritance. A few days later, the younger son packed his bags and took off to a distant country. Probably thinking, I'm not coming back there. I'm not going to go back there under the authority of my dad. I'm going to just go and do what I want. And that's, that's what he did. He went off and he spent the money on wild parties. Luxurious stuff craziness, and it didn't take long, and the money was gone. Not many days later, the younger son gathered together all that he had and traveled to a distant country. There he wasted his wealth with reckless living. He squandered the whole inheritance. And then when it was gone, what happened? It says, after he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that country, and he began to be in need. Everything was gone. All the money was gone. What, what happened to his friends that he had before? He had parties. All those people came and had parties with him. What happened to those friends? Well, they weren't really friends, were they? His money was gone. They left. And now he found himself really at the bottom, not knowing what to do, 
found himself a job feeding pigs. He was so hungry, he wanted to eat the food that the pigs were eating. And nobody gave him anything. He was hungry, he was starving, it says. Ah, he was at the bottom, down in the dumps, not knowing what to do. And sometimes it takes that, doesn't it? To lead a person to come to their senses, to realize what they had done. And he came to his senses, the Bible says. The parable goes on. He recognized what he had done, how terrible he had been to his father. What disrespect, how he dishonored and disobeyed his father. How could he have done that? And he thought to himself, maybe I can just go back and my father would treat me like one of his servants. At least I'd have something to eat and a place to be. When he came to his senses, the text says, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? And I'm dying from hunger. I will get up, go to my father and tell him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. What is it that draws him back to his father? It's the father's love and the father's mercy. That's what he is thinking about now. Before, when he was having those wild parties, he wasn't thinking about that at all. He was thinking all about himself. He was caught up in himself and what he wanted to do. But now, he's beginning to remember his father's love. He's feeling the guilt. He's feeling the shame of it all. How could I do this to my father? Doesn't the law of God do that to us? It should. It should show us what we deserve because of our sin. The Bible says, by the law is the knowledge of sin. And the wages of sin then, the Bible says, is death. Eternal death should lead us to recognize what we have in Christ Jesus. And because of our Heavenly Father's amazing grace. See, we were lost but now we are found because of that amazing grace. It's not because of something we did that was so wonderful. It's not because of the works that we carried out. No, it's because of God's amazing grace. We were all lost at one time and then found by that grace in Christ. Maybe you're also one that during teenage years or younger years, you left God. Now you're back. And you're listening to God's word. You were wayward. You were on your own. And God found you and brought you back. Oh, that's a time to rejoice and to be happy. And there are a lot of people out there in the world who are lost. People that we know as well. That we want to share such an amazing message with. About the Father's amazing grace. So now, as this younger son began his journey home, he thought about what he was going to say to his father. And he rehearsed it in a way. He practiced his speech. I am no longer worthy, he said he'd tell his dad, to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he's all ready with what he's going to say. To repent. To express his sin before his father. As he is coming closer to his father's house, his father sees him far away and runs to his son, puts his arms around him, hugs his son and kisses his son and is so happy to see his son. You see, when the son was involved in all of that wild living and parties, he wasn't thinking about his father and his father's love at that time. But the father never stopped thinking about his son. And when he saw his son, oh, he just had to go and welcome him. And the son couldn't even get out hardly what he had rehearsed. And the father said to his servants, 
Get that robe, get a robe and put it on him. Put shoes on his feet. Put that family ring on his finger. And kill the fattened calf. We're going to have a party. Because my son, who was lost, is, is now found. What does that take you to? Doesn't that take you to Christ Jesus, our Savior and Lord? We wear a robe of righteousness. Those are the clothes of Christ. And God has given that robe of righteousness to us as a gift. Here you are. You are found. Here's that robe of righteousness. You are my child. You're a member of my family, and I'm going to treat you as such. You are an heir of eternal life. Everything that Christ won is yours. I give it to you as a wonderful gift. God says, this is the amazing love of the heavenly Father. Bring the fattened calf, the Father says, and kill it. Let us eat and celebrate, because this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Then they began to celebrate. Then the second son comes home after being in the field all day, working hard, and he hears the celebration, the party going on. He says to a servant, servant, what's going on here? The servant tells him, your brother, your father's son, came home. Your father is celebrating, and he killed the fattened calf. Oh, that older son became angry and upset. Resentful, feeling betrayed. And he stayed out, and the father came out. You see, once again, the father's love. The father's love reaching out to the younger son, reaching out to this other son who is also lost. Lost because he's thinking of himself. Lost because he's thinking everything is unfair. He's left out. He's cheated. He's slighted. He's hurt. You know, all of that can poison a heart and a soul. You know it can. If you hold on to those grudges and you hold on to that anger and that hatefulness and that resentment, it's just going to eat up your heart and your soul. It's going to lead you to be cold and callous. And so the father goes out to the older son. He said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. But it was fitting to celebrate and be glad, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Turn things around, son. Don't think of yourself. Think of your brother. You see, the angels in heaven are rejoicing over one sinner who repents. So are we going to be upset, feeling like we're cheated? Somebody comes to faith and is found moments before they die? No. We're going to be happy. We're going to celebrate. Doesn't matter who it is. Doesn't matter when it happens. We are going to celebrate. We know soul that was lost is found because that's what happened to us. That's what happened to us. So think of all the blessings that we have once again enjoyed by the grace of God through God's holy word. We have been reminded of how our Lord Jesus came to this earth to seek and to save that which was lost. He went all the way to the cross in order to do that, to pay for every single one of our sins. His resurrection is the announcement that it's all done. It's complete. Salvation is yours. And why? Why? Because of the Father's amazing grace. Amen. Please stand. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. We confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As the offering baskets go around, please be sure to put that white attendance guest card in one of the baskets. And for those who are worshiping with us online, and we welcome them, uh, you can register that with the link that is above the video or using the code that is on the screen. We give as we have been touched again by the amazing love and grace of our Heavenly Father. And as the offering baskets are brought forward, we're dedicating all of the offerings, those given here, those given online, and those dropped off. We love because he first loved us. Let's sing then the next hymn, which is hymn number 654 in the blue hymnal. Jesus sinners does receive. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. continue to look for an early childhood ministry director, a full-time preschool teacher, and a part-time preschool teacher for our school. We go to our Lord in prayer. Please stand. Lord, we were on our way to hell. Like the younger son in the parable, we were lost, but by your grace are found. We were dead, but now we are alive in Christ. When we waver, O oh Lord, remind us of your love and grace in Christ so that we never get lost again. 
Use us to share the gospel with anyone lost in their unbelief and sin. Use us to show them forgiveness from you, the Heavenly Father. Keep us also from the sins of the other older son, sins of jealousy, self-righteousness, and a lack of love. May we always rejoice with the angels of heaven over one sinner who repents. Dear Heavenly Father, we earnestly ask that you provide the early childhood ministry director, the full-time preschool teacher, and the part-time preschool teacher for our school. As you hear the prayers of your people and respond in love, we trust your plan and bow to your will. Please give us a full staff so that nothing hinders your mission to proclaim your word and prepare your people, your children, for time and eternity. Almighty God, we thank you for teaching us the things you want us to believe and do. Help us by your Holy Spirit to keep your word in pure hearts, that we may be strengthened in faith, guided in holiness, and comforted in life and in death. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name we also pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Please be seated. Before we close with hymn number 810, just a few announcements at this time and then a few later. We would like to impress upon you the Lenten midweek services again. And they're held on Wednesdays from 3.30 to 4.30 and then the later one is at 7 o'clock. With the fellowship meal in between from 4.15 to 6.30. It'll be hosted this week, this next week by the Ladies Evening Fellowship. And we're looking to enjoy the delicious soup that they'll be making. Also, Holy Week is not far away. In fact, from this weekend, only two weeks away. So be sure to check out when the services are. Of course, regular times for Palm Sunday. But then we have Holy Week Thursday, Good Friday, and then the Easter services. Remember, for Easter, we'll be going to 9.30 instead of 10.30 on Easter again. Let's sing the next hymn which is hymn number 810, the first song of Isaiah. 